What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week, and welcome to the third episode in our three-part series where I, as a Pro Tools user, try other DAWs for sound design. In the first video, we took a look at Logic Pro X. In last week's video, we looked at Adobe Audition, and this week, we're going to be diving into Reaper. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to join the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, there will be a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So before we jump into Reaper, unlike Logic Pro X and Adobe Audition, while I've never used them for sound design, I have used them for other things. Reaper, on the other hand, I've never used for anything. So while I'm sure the comments is going to be, uh, I could have done that differently or that better. Keep in mind, I've never used this program at all. So it's, I'm still going to put it through the same paces that we did logic and Adobe audition. So we're going to try editing. We're going to try manipulating a dialogue track to make it sound like a robot. And we're going to try mixing some already created layers together to make a laser sound. That being said, I have no idea where any of the tools are and I have no idea how to work inside Reaper. So it's definitely going to be a learning experience and let's just dive right into it. All right, so we're here in Reaper. And while I said that I was going to keep everything stock with these DAWs, um, it was brought to my attention in the comments section of the Logic Pro video that when I got to Reaper, I had the ability to make Reaper look like Pro Tools. So if I can make this look like Pro Tools and kind of help out my workflow, I'm going to do it. So first I need to figure out how. Two very boring minutes later. Well, that sort of looks like Pro Tools. Uh, I mean, the, the top bar is, is super similar, uh, but before I started recording again, I was playing around with this and I realized that these buttons don't actually do anything. Uh, I think they're there for dramatic effect. Not really sure, which is unfortunate because there's some really useful tools up here in Pro Tools that I would... I would like to be able to use. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is drag that cloth Foley session in, which has six cloth movements on one track. And I just want to try and figure out how easy it is to chop that up into six individual files. Okay, so apparently there is no import audio under the file section. It was under insert. Um, weird, but but I got it. All right, so let's try to chop this up. And okay, I have my the eye cursor here, but when I mouse over the track, it just clicks on it. And then we get this super thick zero line like I had in Logic. Maybe there's a preference to change that, but currently not a fan. Okay, so I, I do like the scroll zoom. That's, that's definitely useful. And I did discover that I can, I can scrub by dragging the cursor, which is nice. So let's figure out how to cut these. Because I've never opened Reaper before, I have no idea what the, the key commands are. Okay, so after looking at some of the key commands, apparently S will chop that out, which I guess makes sense. That'd be like, splice or something and so then I can just drag this in and make some chops the one thing that I don't like though is as I'm scrubbing I notice that my my meter doesn't move which I would prefer but I guess I can just use the scrub tool to try and listen Okay, so cutting it wasn't terrible, and like I suspected, if I hold down the control key, I can multi-select, 
and delete will delete them. Now, let's see. When I was in Logic, I was able to grab these. Yep, awesome. It works the exact same way. So I can just drag these down to a new track. And there you have it. So that was one file that was cut down into six. Being that I've never used this program before, that really wasn't too terrible. I did have to, have to look up what the, the quick key was for splicing. But other than that, that was pretty straightforward. So now let's jump into the dialogue track and see if we can't make it sound like a robot. All right, so I am not going to go through the process that it took for me to turn that dialogue track into a robot sound. Because truth be told, I cheated. I had to find a tutorial on how to do it. Because as someone who has never used Reaper before, this was not readily apparent. Uh, I saw in the effects list that there was a vocoder and I could not for the life of me figure out how to use it. Apparently you have to create a second track with that's producing a sawtooth wave and then reroute through the matrix, sending that sawtooth wave to the vocoder it was a pain the outcome is phenomenal but it was such a pain that i'm not going to go through like i said how to actually do it instead i in the description below you're going to find a link to the video that i watched to figure out how to do it so if you want to know how to do it go check out that link uh, but this was after putting the vocoder on there and adding a little reverb this is what I ended up with. This is a test audio track to make myself sound like a robot. Which, like I said, is the outcome is phenomenal. It's perfect. It's definitely robotic and kind of reminds me of a little something. Intergalactic planetary, planetary intergalactic. All right, so moving along to the laser before I end up with like a copyright claim or something. Um, I, I had actually imported all the sounds for the laser and then I deleted them because as I was importing them, I saw something really neat that is something that is very much like Pro Tools that I didn't get, uh, that I actually made mention to in the Adobe Audition video, where when I import multiple files in Adobe Audition, it kind of put everything all on one track. Whereas this, if I select multiple tracks, then I can just highlight them all. And when I hit open, it actually gives me the option of whether I want to put them on separate tracks or single tracks. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And just like in the other videos, you know, I've still got three clips here that have a buildup and a discharge. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop those out real quick and be right back. All right, so just like I had done before in the other dolls, I got everything split out and I've got our charge ups on their own separate tracks versus the discharge because I want to be able to mix those a little bit differently. And while it did take me a little while to find the mixer window, I did find out that apparently just control M will bring it up. And I did already undock this uh, so that I can move it around. And that is one thing that I like about Reaper is I know you guys can't see the other screens, but I can actually move this to the two other screens that I have that you can't see, or I can make it full screen if I want, which really helps if I wasn't trying to make videos and I was just working in Reaper, uh, I could use my other monitors and that would really help my workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix these. And just like I did in the other video, I'm going to start by just pulling all of these down because that's, that's just how I mix regardless of whether I'm inside any DAW or on a console, doesn't matter. Start with everything low. So I'm going to go ahead and get some levels set and see what we end up with. All right, so I got these mixed, and while I haven't looked at the exact numbers, visually my mixer looks pretty similar to what we had in Adobe Audition. 
And just like the others, I didn't do any EQing or anything. I just wanted to see how easy it was to kind of mix some levels together. And this is what we end up with. So pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like, and maybe this is just the Pro Tools theme, is when it was clipping, typically I could click the red on uh, the master fader, but every time I clicked on it, it didn't work. So I had to come over to the actual meter in side the, uh, the multi-track here to get rid of the clipping. And maybe there's even a key command for it, which I know there is one in Pro Tools where you can just do a key command and it'll take away all the red from your clipping. That way you can kind of see where it happens again. But all in all, it was it was pretty straightforward, just like any other DAW that I would be using. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap things up for this week's video and tentatively this series. I may do others in the future. I know in some of the comments there was mention of FL Studio and Nuendo. Uh, it really just kind of depends on what I can get my hands on. And uh, so we'll see kind of how that goes. Also, don't forget that today is the last day to get your entry in for the I Challenge You to Sound Design This Clip number seven. I will be doing a live review next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if that's something you're working on, make sure you get those entries in. And don't forget when you upload them back to YouTube, you put hashtag the sound effects guy in the title. That way I can find it. I've also got some really cool projects coming up uh, since the first video in this series where I had mentioned that I was inspired by Cactus Sound. I'm actually working on a project with Cactus Sound, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel as well as his so that you don't miss that. I've also got another video coming up with Audio Dread in the future. Uh, these are all things that are still kind of in the work, so I don't have an exact date on when those are gonna be out but make sure you stay tuned so that you don't miss out. Until next time.